Nice rack. So I had a comment, a question come in asking for some details about how and why I chose to lay out my home theater AV rack. So let's kind of do a sweeping overview and I can talk about why I have things positioned the way I do, why I put things in certain places and structured it the way I did. I should start by saying that there, my rack has more than just the home theater equipment in it, of course. It has the equipment for the theater. It has the equipment for my living room zone. It has automation gear. The other quick comment right away is the rack it comes from Snap AV. It's a strong brand, a double set of racks. I got it a long time ago when I origin when we originally built the house. Got it from my friend Dan DiCarlo at AudioVision. I don't know a whole lot more about it than that, honestly. It's been here for several years, and I do like it. I'm, I'm a pretty organized person, and so you'll find a lot of the comments that I'm going to make are about keeping things, like things together and structured in an organized way. I do have some mindset related to like what's hot, heat rises but I'm not a thermodynamics expert. My rack is in a pretty sizable storage room here. It is in a basement. Even with stuff running, including the gaming PC, this room stays cool. I don't particularly have any concerns or needs to super prioritize heat dissipation or ambient temperature in my space. If you have a rack in a tighter closet and you don't have good airflow, it's not in a wider space, that may be a stronger consideration for you. I've got it easy, basically. Even playing games on the 3090 Ti gaming PC for a while, this room only ever gets so hot. One major design consideration that I have is I kind of dedicated what is the left-hand side of the rack to the, utili the, to the utility type of devices, and the right-hand side of the rack is to sources and processing and amplification of my specific entertainment zones, the living room and the theater. So way down on the bottom here, we start with a cyber power. That's a 1500 uh, watt UPS. It's a utility item, so I put it down on the bottom left. A couple other reason why, reasons why it's there is that of course has to plug into the wall and behind the rack, the actual outlets are kind of down into the left. So it's a nice close proximity. I like short cable runs and keeping things tied up neat and clean. So keeping things closer to the thing that they're connected to is always a plus and a virtue, I would say, in a rack, and that accomplishes that. That device is also very heavy. You'll find that some devices as well, when you put them in a rack, they only tie in the front or you screw into the front. Some devices have to be screwed into the front and the back, and I don't have really good facility in my rack to fasten devices both to the front rails and the back rails because, as you'll see, I have some vertical... Um, outlet plug strips that are in the back and get in the way of that. In the cyber power, if I recall correctly, it's been a while since I put it in, but I think that if I, that needs to be tied in the front and the back to the rails, I can't do it. So my ultimate decision was just to put it on the floor of the rack. It fits perfectly in there. There's enough space, nice and nestled in. It's heavy, so it's it's on the bottom. It doesn't have to be mounted. I don't have to worry about the four mounting points, and it's in a great location for everything to plug in. I mentioned those vertical strips. They go, they're both, they're on the inside of the rack. So one's on the back on this side, one's in the back on this side. They both go straight down and their cords are at the bottom. So those cords zip right into the UPS. Neat, clean, close, and all tied up. So after that, the other thing I have in here, I do have a drawer and I keep my, my kilowatt, my tape measure, my hand lights, my headlamp, other tools and things that I use around the home theater space in the rack right in this drawer. Technically it's a Blu-ray DVD drawer. I don't I don't use it anything like that. So this is again utility and I, I, I like to keep this on the bottom to be able to open it and get into it and so I have it um, just above that UPS but far enough above that the UPS of course has some breathing room. All right so after that section is my automation section, my controller section. So there's three Control 4 uh, devices here. Technically now you'll see Triad. The, the Control 4 audio is kind of being rebranded and I just had to recently replace, replace my matrix switch. So this is my Control 4 EA5 controller. This is an eight zone Triad Control 4 uh, matrix for distributing audio to the eight zones around the house. And this is the amplifier. So eight channels of switching, eight channels of amplification. And I all, you'll see this repeated, I, uh, the processor and its related amplifier. I always try to keep those two things together in the rack. And we read left to right, and we read kind of you know up to down 
And so I like signals to flow that way, left to right or signals to flow down. So I put the processors always above the amplifiers. Logical to me. Control 4 amp already has these slotted kind of rails to, for some airflow. So these are maybe a little tighter together. Um, in the past, my matrix was a 2U and the new one is a 1U. So I just put the blanks in here, but it, it's, it's fine. Processor amplifier together, very short cables linking the two of them, literally like uh, six inch or 12 inch RCA analog audio cables, you know, eight pairs of them connecting for all of the eight zones in the household and then control four. And in the future, if I added any other home automation stuff, like perhaps a, a hard drive or some type of a video recorder when I finally do cameras, it would go here. Anything related to control, again, in this section. So then we blank out for a little while. I've got a, a multi-U panel here. One, two, three, effectively four empty shelves. I've even got two empty shelves sitting on my other shelves over there. So a lot of space to grow, a lot of space to add devices if I need to. And I left all the blank space kind of over here on the utility side. There is something sitting in here. This is just the case for uh, an Xbox Elite controller that I use in the theater room. But notice a couple things I guess worth pointing out. I do try to have a little bit of, of separation between everything, a little bit of white space. So you'll see the one U blank, a shelf, a one U blank, a shelf. And that theme also kind of sticks throughout the entirety of the rack. Both to give your devices, you know, give devices that might be on this shelf a little extra open air above them, breathing room, heat dissipation, stuff like that. But also I have space to spread things out and I don't have to pack things like right on top, right on top of the other, which is nice having, you know, two pieces of rack versus just one. Technically, if I packed everything together, I probably could get it in one, but I, I started out buying two with the side-by-side -side and connected them. Love it. If you design for room to grow, room to expand, room to reorganize, I guess that's another tip that I would put out there. Last piece on the utility side here is my NAS. This is a Synology DS1821. Stores pictures, family pictures, personal files, all the YouTube stuff, and then serves some local media rips but I put that up at the top because this is a little bit taller. It doesn't specifically conform to a fixed, you know, 2U, 3U kind of height. So I, I run the little blank up top just to give it, again, some breathing room, some space and all of that. And I think it fits in kind of nicely at the top as well as being, you know, easily accessible when I want to put in a driver. All right, we're going to look up for a minute here and then we'll come back to kind of down the other side. But notice on the top here, we've got gaming systems. It's a 3090 Ti gaming PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X. I did have my Switch down here for a little while, but if you watch the most recent Hybrid Zone 2, I talk about why I put the Switch actually back in the living room itself, directly connected to the TV. So councils on top of the rack. Having this in a closed door storage room is such a benefit because I can do kind of stuff like this versus if a, rack, if a rack was visible. If I had this rack in my space or whatever, I'd probably want those councils you know, ni nicely sitting on a shelf, tied in clean. The main reason that I have these on top is controller range and reception. I'm playing games on the other side of the wall in the theater. More often though, I'm playing games in the living room, which is a floor up and over a room that way. And if I have these councils in the rack, in shelves, you can forget about uh, controller reception to the living room. But when they sit up on top and they have the ability to like expand that wireless bubble, it's perfect. And so when I game on PC, I'm gaming usually with the controller and Xbox controller is my preference. And so on top of the computer is the Microsoft uh, Xbox wireless USB adapter. So it's right on top of the case, it's pointing up. I have done PC builds in the past where I did them in rack mountable cases where you could you know, slide them in. But the problem with that, especially with PC components today, is they're so big. The 3090 Ti is huge. I've got a 360 millimeter water cool radiator for that CPU. You try and pack all of that stuff into a home theater PC style case or something that would go actually into the rack, it's, it's gonna be really hard. Um, let alone not getting as good of airflow on what is arguably probably the hottest component in the entire system. So by having that thing up there, I can run the fans in this room super high. It's free, it's clear, air can flow through it. It's not blowing hot air on my other components. It, it's, it's kind of up already where it kind of the warmer air 
goes. And I can build in a regular desktop PC case because there's more than enough room up there to just set that thing, you know, set that thing and let it run. All right, so let's come back down the right-hand side of the rack. And as I mentioned, organizationally speaking, one of the things that I really like to do is have my signals flow down. So you'll see I have sources, I have processing, and then I have amplification that goes out to the requisite speakers and all of that. So at the top of my rack is sources. A little hard to see, but on this shelf, I just have the Apple TV sitting there. That's the one that serves my home theater. The one that's in the living room is actually in the living room, directly connected to the TV. Below that, we have the, the rack mount kit for the Kaleidoscape, Strato, and a Compact Terra next to it. The primary, they're the two video sources, right, that I use throughout my, my setup for, for everything, primarily watching the Kaleidoscape in the theater. I, I, I strongly recommend, and I generally do, that if something has a rack mount ability, a rack mount kit, or whatnot that you can get for it, versus just setting it on a shelf, I, I like that. Initially, I was inclined to just put the Kaleidoscape components on a shelf, but I got the rack mount kit kind of for free with a Strato Terra combo uh, bundle. Used it. Really glad I did. It works great. And so I generally do try to buy the rack mount, rack ears, you know, whatever it might be for the devices. Love it when manufacturers actually include that stuff in the box. So kudos to the ones that do versus nickel and diamond you for 50 bucks for a couple of little metal brackets. That's a joke. So I mentioned I've got two zones of, of processing, audio, uh, video processing, switching, and then amplification here. So I've got the living room above the theater stuff. Really nerdy, I guess, but the, the living room is above my theater, uh, logistically in my house. So Anthem STR, again, processor first, then amplification. That's the, that's the processor that runs the 2.2 audio setup. Um, in my living room, it gets most of its audio source, though, through the television. My sources go directly through my TV. That's the video switcher. And then I go optical out, back down to the rack. And so this pretty much has one audio input, which is that single optical uh, input. And then I've got two uh, subwoofer amplifiers from Triad, powering the Triad bronze subs that are in the living room. So this guy wires directly into these. Right below it, nice, uh, compact together, short wires, all of those benefits. And notice again, I am blanking at least one U in between kind of every component, sometimes two U because I have the space and that, that's how I give everything its little bit of a chance to breathe, dissipate some heat. Back down to the bottom of the right hand side here, we've got theater components, processing and amplification, AVM 70, and then three Parasound amps, the Halo amps, and I did do something specific here to help with heat dissipation is basically I left a blank. So above the AVM 70 and above each of the Parasound amps is an empty 1U section. And then I did a, a panel, a 1U panel above it. So every one of these devices, all four of them have 2U of space, uh, 2U of space above them. The immediate space above each being open. So there's no fans, there's nothing sucking in or blowing out there. But just through you know natural convection and dissipation, I think that's a wise thing to do. I think it helps. Again, I'm good in this room. Nothing ever really gets too hot. But I tried to make a, a, a minor logical choice in terms of giving the, giving stuff the ability to breathe. Again, AVM70 processor above the amps that are driving the speakers that this processes. Of course, I have one channel of the of one A52 plus and another channel of the other A52 plus driving the speakers in the living room. Someday maybe I might buy a little two channel amp just because of the switching and the triggering involved and get the living room speakers off of the home theater amplifiers, but it's working great for right now. Let's take a look behind it and I can talk about some of the mentality that I have in terms of how I wired stuff. But a couple things to point out, here's those strips, those power strips. Those are from Wattbox, my original power conditioning in the, in the rack was a watt box device that was down on the bottom, right down there. When I got the UPS, I got rid of the watt box because it served the same purpose, but I did keep the watt box strips. Lots of plugs, it's great. I can use short power cables. Things can plug in very deliberately, you know, at the level that they're at. So many plugs for a lot of devices. I got a lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of things to plug in, but there's one of these on each side. I'll try to show the other side as well. 
And then I do a couple of other things back here, wiring wise. I have a couple of these metal brackets that go across. Some of them have the slats. Some of them like this are just the little round bars, but I have a variety of them, one, two, three, four, actually on this left side of the rack. That's where I tie stuff to, just using Velcro. Bought a couple big rolls of uh, basically a Velcro strip and I cut them, to, cut them to length and I cut them to width for how I use them. I have a couple of these um, labeler little plastic uh, snap-on pieces on cables that I need some help kind of at times figuring out what's what that all that all works great and then you know you can see I pretty organized I got different different blocks of cables going together tied up together that hole goes out over into my theater room and that's how the wiring goes through and I do try to separate video audio cables from power so on this side of the rack I try to keep everything related to power over there and I try to keep everything related to video and audio and speaker over here. This is a bunch of HDMI cables, right, running from the AVM70 that run along the rack and up. So I do tie things down, uh, tie things down to the left or right sides, you know, tie things down to these brackets with those Velcro, those Velcro strips. I love those Velcro strips. Again, being able to cut them, cut them to size, cut them to width. You can see I tie, you know, Everything's as, as nice as I can try to make it. A lot of wires back here, and I got a lot of wires structurally from the house coming down and feeding into various things. A variety of wires that I'm, I'm not even using actually as well, ethernet zones and other stuff that we pre-wired. So taking a look on the other side, I should note this actually, this is my ethernet switch, 24 port ethernet switch, Asus brand. Been working nicely for quite a while. And I put that on the back. And so everything ethernet wires on the back. I could have put that on the front. A lot of people do put their ethernet switches on the front, but this thing's pretty ugly. This is a mess of wires. Um, I got that idea. Actually, that's the way I think Dan did it when he did some of the original rack setup. And I think that was a great idea. Put the, put the switching, put the ethernet stuff um, on the back, get those wires out of the way, try and keep the front a little bit cleaner. So if I go down, there's all of those blanks, of course. There's my control section. There's the wiring for the eight zone audio system. And again, note, nice short purpose, purpose length cables all throughout. And we go all the way to the bottom. Oh, I actually missed it when I, I was in the front, but more utility items on the utility side of the rack. Of course, this is my cable modem and that's our UMA. That's the back of that drawer piece. And then the cyber power down below, got my power cables and together as much as possible, bunching things up. Here's all the power cables for the Parasound amps. I do want to replace these at some point with, you know, two foot or three foot power cables so I don't have to spool them quite as much. They can just come off. And then here's my wall plugs. I got a 20 amp dedicated circuit right to this rack with four outlets running on it. Uh, the UPS plugs into one. And I don't plug my, my Parasound amps uh, into the UPS. They draw too much, especially at startup. So those do run uh, directly off the wall. So there you go, whole rack overview. Um, I hope that answered the questions about why I kind of did certain things. Maybe gave some inspiration about things to think about when you're laying out your rack, thinking about how you're putting stuff in, taking stuff out, and wiring things up. If you've noticed anything in there that you think is room for improvement, something maybe that I could be doing better, sound off in the comments, let me know. I always tweak in with this stuff and as I get new equipment or things turn over or upgrade, you know, always give it a lot of thought about where I'm going to put it. Does it affect the way that I'm doing the layout? Over the, over the several years that I've had this rack, before the home theater and then into the home theater, I've definitely rejiggered it and restructured it a bunch of times. It's home theater art, right? And fun. This is how we tinker. This is how enthusiasts like us in this hobby kind of wrench on stuff. If you've got some good rack tips, uh, layout tips, structural tips for or folks, things that you've done in your setups that you think work awesome, please share them in the comments so people can watch the video and get other inspirations because there's certainly many more great ideas out there. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. And if you'd like to support the channel, there's a whole bunch of ways down in the description.